from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, February the 12th, 2018. We open with a series of events in Israel this weekend that began when an Iranian drone infiltrated Israeli airspace early Saturday morning. The drone, which was launched from Syria, was intercepted and brought down by an Israeli attack helicopter. Israel then conducted a number of airstrikes on Iranian and Syrian targets in Syria in response, including striking the facility from which the Iranian drone was launched. During the attack, one Israeli jet was hit by Syrian fire. The jet was able to make it back to Israel and the pilot and navigator ejected from the damaged plane just before it crashed. The pilot was severely injured but is said to now be improving in stable condition. His navigator was lightly injured. The downing of the Israeli jet, by the way, is the first time that Israel has lost one of its planes since the 1982 Lebanon war. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a video statement about Saturday's events. This morning, Iran brazenly violated Israel's sovereignty. They dispatched an Iranian drone from Syrian territory into Israel. And this demonstrates that our warnings were 100% correct. Israel holds Iran and its Syrian host responsible for today's aggression. We will continue to do whatever is necessary to protect our sovereignty and our security. U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis expressed his support for Israel's actions, saying today that Israel has an absolute right to defend themselves. And this morning, two IDF soldiers came under attack in the West Bank. A male and female soldier accidentally entered the Arab city of Jenin, where their vehicle was quickly surrounded by Palestinian residents who attacked them with rocks and chairs, shattering the vehicle's windshield and windows and grabbing at the soldiers. One of the soldiers' weapons was also stolen. Palestinian security forces tried to protect the soldiers during the riot and ultimately helped them get out of the area in coordination with Israel's civil administration. The female soldier sustained light to moderate injuries from the shattered glass. She was taken to the hospital for treatment. The IDF was searching for the stolen weapon and conducting an investigation. Well, Prime Minister Netanyahu's office clarified comments that were reported earlier by the Israeli media saying that the prime minister had said he was in talks with the United States about applying Israeli sovereignty to the Jewish settlements in the West Bank, reported by the media as talks of annexation. Netanyahu's office denied those reports, saying that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu updated the Americans on the initiatives coming up in the Knesset referring apparently to the so-called sovereignty bill, which if passed would apply Israeli law to the settlements. Netanyahu's office added that the Americans expressed unequivocally that they are committed to advancing President Trump's peace plan. A short while before, the White House also denied Netanyahu's reported remarks. White House spokesman Josh Raffel said reports that the United States discussed with Israel an annexation plan for the West Bank are false. The United States and Israel have never discussed such a proposal, and the president's focus remains squarely on his Israeli-Palestinian peace initiative. Renowned Israeli author David Grossman will receive the Israel Prize, Israel's top civilian honor for literature. Speaking at the Jerusalem conference today, Israel's education minister Naftali Bennett said Grossman is one of the most exciting, profound, and influential voices in Israeli literature. Also noting his own political differences with Grossman, who is known for his left-leaning views while Bennett is on the right. Bennett said, though, we are one nation and mentioned that Grossman's son was killed in action during the 2006 Second Lebanon War. The Israel Prize is awarded each year on Independence Day, which this year falls on the night of April the 18th. And Sir Paul McCartney will be coming to Israel at the end of May to receive the Wolf Prize for music. A spokesman for the Office of Israeli President Reuven Rivlin said the former Beatle will be recognized for his seminal contribution to music in the modern era. McCartney will share the $100,000 prize with international conductor Adam Fisher. 
Despite some commendable performances, Israel's figure skating team did not qualify for the finals at the Winter Olympic Games in South Korea. Team Israel finished eighth in the short program after a number of routines this weekend, including ice dancing with 17-year-old Adel Tankova and 21-year-old Ronald Zilberberg of Israel, who finished last in their category. And women's single skating competitors also finished last, despite a great routine from Amy Buchanan, the American now competing for Israel, who scored her personal best. The five teams that did advance were Canada, Russia, the U.S., Italy, and Japan. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS from Monday, February the 12th at 7 o'clock, it's the Wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, a look at the future of European Jewry. At 8, a discussion of American Jewry and German Jewry. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with author Tuvia Tenenbaum on the Chaim. At 10, author Dove Seidman speaks with New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman about morality. That's from the 92nd Street Y. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz goes one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the JBS News Update from Monday, February the 12th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.